I'm really interested in different kinds of intelligences and learning about the people who have those and revealing the different qualities that enable them to be creative and original in their work. I want to reveal a sense of humor if they have it, sadness perhaps, anger, force, combined with humor, which might be, I'm smarter than you are. <laughs> anything. It doesn't matter. And I can't begin to know what that is, either from reading all their books, seeing all their movies. That doesn't tell me anything. I don't have preconceived ideas when I, before I go to a session. It's just my intuitive read of, of the person. I can see who they are in a split second, if it's a portrait session, the minute they walk in the door. But I don't, I'm not critical in the same way when I'm out in the world meeting people, walking down the street, socially. Uh, it's something else. And maybe it's because I completely forget myself in a portrait session. I just don't exist. And it's the only time I'm really happy. Well, I had very few friends who are artists. And I'm also interested in the kind of intelligence that artists possess, just as I'm interested in how the minds of scientists work or mathematicians. And of course, I end up in every project I do with saying that you can't make generalizations because each individual is different. But at the same time, they do have something in common because they've chosen a mode of expression that is different from other people's. As in all my work, I'm only interested in the most remarkable. I particularly like Jasper Johns. Uh, I found him to be very warm and phenomenally bright. I guess that's no, maybe that's no surprise, but he's like off the charts smart and very, very sensitive. With Jasper and Bryce, I was invited to their studios so I guess they assumed I might want to photograph them in the environment. And I tried with Jasper, but the picture that worked out was the one with the black background. So I'm always happy to use an environmental background if it doesn't distract from the person. I started using a black background often in my photographs because I had the opportunity to photograph very well-known people, for example, Georges Luis Borges. But he was staying in an apartment down at NYU because he had been invited to lecture there. And I didn't want to, it was a nice apartment, but I didn't want to include anything in it because it had nothing to do with him. So I used the black background. He was intellectual. He was very cerebral. And when they returned to New York the next time, we had lunch together. And in the meantime, I'd been scuba diving in the Red Sea. And I was telling him about my experience of it. And lower down you go, the fewer colors there are. And he was fascinated by that because he'd lost his vision. And he would lose different colors the more blind he became that particular illness, eye disease that he had. So he was quite interested in hearing the metaphor. I was very interested in people. My father was a psychoanalyst. I think people are really fascinating. Um, of course, everybody thinks people are, well, I don't know if everybody thinks people are fascinating. But it's actually one of the problems that I have in the photography world, if you can call it that, because Curators and dealers and maybe even most photographers are interested in objects. They're not interested in people. And photographs that they call portraits are not portraits. And I like to reveal what's inside a person and take the mask away. Uh, I also think the choice of who you photograph is is really important. It's possible that a street photographer or, or you know, a documentary photographer who photographs on the street, Winogrand, for example, people would say that he's photographing people and that they're looking at portrait, some to some degree, portrait photography. 
and learning something about the character of the persons in the picture. But for me, that's, that's a superficial glance. You know, I'm really interested in what makes a person do what they do. The couples project was very difficult. It went on for years because it was so difficult and I only had one success in every seven portrait sessions. Um, I had no trouble with the homosexuals and I had no trouble with the minority couples, but the whites were impossible. So often they would be in front of the camera and it was like they were the presence they would be at a cocktail party. There was just mask and they weren't relating to each other in a personal way. I couldn't get them to reveal th their feelings for each other, either animosity or lovingness or anything. I just couldn't get feeling. I would say Philip Johnson and David Whitney is my favorite portrait in that book. Another one which actually was edited out of the book was uh, Michelle and Barack Obama. They were living in an apartment in Hyde Park. Uh, they'd been married for four years. They had no children. And he was writing his first book, I believe, and working as an attorney, probably doing some teaching. My publisher told me, because of the nature of my success rate with the different couples, that I had too many blacks and too many homosexuals, and that I had to take some of them out. It's hard to believe how much the world has changed since 1999, 2000. I was able to photograph James Watson and many other people. Um, I have 28 Nobel laureates in the book, but I didn't have Crick. So I finished the book and I picked up the phone and I called Crick's assistant and I said, I know he said no, I know he's not all that well. I said, but I've done all of this work, I've photographed all these people and I feel like I've created a ship without a main mast. And I meant it. And the assistant said, oh, he'll like that, he, she said. So he said yes. My portraits are good because I make them for the purpose of making a portrait, not because they're going to be reproduced in a newspaper or a magazine or be the back of a book jacket, not for a purpose. Because if it's for a purpose, the subject has an idea that he or she is illustrating something of themselves for that purpose. There's a reserve or a direction, and I don't want that. I, I want people to say that I was successful in defying death. It's very funny because sometimes I'll make a portrait and somebody won't like it or their family won't like it and they think the black background is morbid and depressing um, instead of sort of ab abstracting from time which is what it does and then I get a call they die don't know where we put the portrait do you have another copy we'd like to put it in the front of the room at the funeral because maybe it does have a black background Maybe they're not riding a bicycle and doing something that they're clearly not doing now or will ever do again. And it's by definition the past. But with the black background, if I've been successful in revealing who they were, they live on.